Experiments have been done on humans for hundreds of years, and history repeats itself. Mustard gas was used in gas chambers on soldiers in World War II. In the 90s, the government acknowledged it had performed tests on soldiers without them knowing. MK Ultra Mind Control. This operation ran from 1953 to 1973 when President Ford committed, um, made a committee to look into the CIA's activity. They said it ended in 1973. Now, these human test subjects went through basically brainwashing and mind control experiments through many different forms, through many different means. <clears throat> Mosquito swarms were released in American cities to spread dengue fever during the Cold War. In the South, swarms of mosquitoes were released over Georgia and Florida via helicopters to see how capable the bugs would be of transmitting diseases. Government researchers tracked how quickly they spread, entered people's houses, and bit them. Their findings? In one day, the mosquitoes could spread as far as two miles. The experiment showed that mosquitoes were very successful at waging biological warfare in Asia, that the army designed a plant that could breed 130 million mosquitoes per month just to spread disease. The records for the project were finally, finally released when the Church of Scientology pressed for documents under the Freedom of Information Act. During the Manhattan Project, weapons grade plutonium, a highly radioactive element that is produced as a byproduct of nuclear fission was injected into the bloodstreams of 18 unconsenting patients. <clears throat> Once in the body, it destroyed DNA from within and drastically increased the risk of cancer. High doses can kill in seconds. Only five of the 18 patients lived longer than 20 years. In another experiment, women and children were given food and drinks laced with radioactive elements. In 1950, U.S. Navy sprayed bacterial pathogens in the sky above San Francisco. Thousands of people fell ill. 1955, the CIA released whooping cough virus near Tampa, Florida using boats. 12 people died. So many were affected. 1956 through 1958. The army unleashed millions of mosquitoes. People suffered fevers, bronchitis, encephalitis, and stillbirths. Agent Orange was used on prisoners and during the Vietnam War. Vets are still suffering the effects today. During the 1950s, children in mental hospitals were infected with hepatitis. It was called the Willowbrook Hepatitis Study of the 1950s. Immediately after World War II, researchers at Vanderbilt University gave 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee drinks that they called vitamin drinks. The drinks contained radioactive iron. They did this to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. 1946 to 1953, Walter E. Fernald State School, Massachusetts experiment sponsored by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission and the Quaker Oats Corporation. 73 kids were fed oatmeal containing radioactive calcium and other radioisotopes to track how nutrients were digested. These kids were not told they were get, being given these chemicals. They were told that they were joining a science club. Now, they didn't know the long-term effects of any of this. Down the line, how, how are these chemicals going to affect the DNA in family strains in genealogy? Are they going to affect these people's children one day? Are they going to infect their grandchildren? Like how far down the line are these things going to travel once infected into human subjects? Now history repeats itself. 
today, the same, some of the same experiments are being done. Bill Gates' mosquito farm, he had a controlled release over Florida and Texas. There is tox, our skies, our air is toxic because of the chemicals that are being sprayed in the skies, aluminum, barium, et cetera, et cetera. There are toxic chemicals in our foods. There are toxic chemicals in our clothing. There are toxic chemicals in tap water. There's so many ways in which they are still running experiments on humans to see how the effects and what will happen to the subjects, whether it's being sprayed from an airplane, whether it's being spread through mosquitoes, whether it's being injected into human subjects themselves, whether it's being put into their food, whether it's being put into the water supply. There are so many different ways If we only knew, and, and this is just going to be part one, I, do, I will have a part two video coming out, but if we only knew the amount of stuff that has happened and been done to, to the human population, it would probably blow your mind. It's just non-stop. No, let's touch on this one. In 1950, the U.S. Navy sprayed bacterial pathogens in the sky above San Francisco. Thousands of people fell ill. We know in the 1950s that they were creating these studies and that they were spraying bacterial pathogens in the sky above a city, in the sky above a huge city. What makes you think? That they're not doing that today. We know that in the 50s, uh, millions of mosquitoes were um, unleashed onto the public to spread disease and it was tracked and studied to see how fast they could do it. And now you have Bill Gates who owns a massive mosquito farm who is releasing, doing controlled releases of genetically modified mosquitoes. Hmm. In the 1950s, children in mental hospitals were infected with hepatitis. In mental hospitals today, people and children are given all kinds of medication and who and they're the perfect victims right because nobody believe will believe what they say nineteen forty six to nineteen fifty three for seven years the Walter E. Fernald State School in Massachusetts experiment sponsored by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. Just, just hold on a second. The U.S. Atomic Energy Commission and the Quaker Oats Foundation, okay, oatmeal. The Quaker Oats Foundation teamed up with the Atomic Energy Commission to, <laughs> this is crazy to me to feed 73 children oatmeal containing radioactive calcium and other radioisotopes to track how nutrients were digested. Kids were told that they were joining a science club. But you have a massive corporation, a food corporation, Quaker Oats, joined the Atomic Energy Commission to, to experiment on these children. What makes you think they stop putting poisons and toxins in food? 
And this is all fact-based. You can look all of this up. Weapons-grade plutonium, a highly radioactive element, was injected into the bloodstreams of 18 unconsenting patients. Once in the body, it destroyed DNA from within and drastically increased the risk of cancer. Only five of the 18 patients lived longer than 20 years. They knowingly infected these people who did not consent with weapons grade plutonium just to see what it would do to the human body by destroying the DNA from within. In another experiment, women and children were given food and drinks laced with radioactive elements just because. Immediately after World War II, researchers at Vanderbilt University gave 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee. So they did this on purpose. They took 829 pregnant women, told the women that they were giving them some type of vitamin drink in, for a study, and the drinks contained radioactive iron. They did this solely to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. So they said, you know, we're not worried about human life. Let's let's give 829 pregnant women this radioactive element to see how fast it will transfer from the mother to the baby purposefully. In 1955, the CIA released whooping cough virus near Tampa, Florida, releasing these viruses onto the public on purpose. Humans have been guinea pigs for government experimentation for years and years and years. So it's not that far of a stretch to think that we're still being used as guinea pigs today. Now, when we talked about MK Ultra, they you during this they used things like drugs, deprivation, hypnosis, and everything else that they could think of to try to brainwash these people into being able to completely control their minds. Crazy. The experiment showed that mosquitoes were very successful at waging biological warfare. So successful, in fact, that in Asia, the army designed a plant that could breed 130 million mosquitoes per month that were made just to spread disease. The records for the project were finally released when the Church of Scientology pressed for documents under the Freedom of Information Act. Now, after Bill Gates did his controlled release of the mosquitoes from his farm, he just happened to release them over Florida and Texas. Not long after that, there was a, a, a small, they say, outbreak of malaria. But the Gates Foundation immediately came out and said, but there is no connection to the cases of malaria from their mosquitoes because it is, quote unquote, scientifically impossible for their genetically modified mosquitoes to spread malaria. The more you know. So I hope you like this video. This is part one. Please let me hear your thoughts and your comments down in the section below. I love you all. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay safe. Keep asking those hard questions. Keep spreading that light. And I'll see you back here for part two.